All right, in this video, I'm gonna be removing my old laundry tub and installing a new laundry tub. This is long, so I'm gonna put timestamps in the description so you can track through to wherever you want if you don't wanna watch the whole thing. So first thing I'm doing is removing the old one. If you have taps like this, in order to remove them, you just pull the top off and then there's a screw underneath and you can undo that screw and then pry the tap off. So I did the hot tap off camera I'm doing the cold tap on camera and it's very fast, very easy. I don't end up taking all of this off. It was a bit of a pain to reach in there and it was really close to the wall with the wrenches and stuff. So I do end up just cutting this off, but you can see that there's some nuts up there and there's like a pop bottle thing that holds the uh, faucet to the sink. And I was gonna take it off, but I didn't wanna lay under the laundry tub wrenching on anything. So I just pulled out the oscillating multi-tool and cut it out. One thing to note, the oscillating multi-tool is pretty loud, so you might want to wear ear protection when you're doing that. And then the other thing I do is unscrew the tail piece from the sink drain, and then I just sort of pry things apart, and then that's what I'm left with. So you can see, like I said, I just cut it out. It's so much easier and faster, and I'm going to have to cut the copper pipes anyway. I'm not going to reuse any of the old water pipes. There are also no shutoffs at the taps for this, so I'm gonna to have to redo that as well. There are shutoffs for the washer and dryer, but they're on a tease. So to get the tailpiece out of there, there is a coupling and then there's a tapered washer in there as well. And you can see the tapered washer is all broken apart. So before you start doing anything like this, you might wanna get some new tapered washers and stuff like that, just so you're ready when uh, things fall apart. So this is the laundry sink that I ended up getting. Obviously this is just sort of dry fit in there. And overall, this installation goes very poorly, but it does get done, so that's, I guess, a good thing. So right away, you can see that I'm gonna have some issues sliding this in, just based on where all the plumbing is. I am gonna have to do some cutting on this cabinet, so I'm gonna get this out of the way. And even the base is too high. So you can see that the copper plumbing is maybe at three and a half inches, whereas the base is at four inches. So I am gonna cut the base down. I debated just notching it out for the plumbing, but then I decided that if I just dropped it down, I could still get all the plumbing inside the cabinet and I wouldn't weaken the base. So that's the route I went and I'm gonna do that a little bit later. But it is absolutely necessary to lower this by about inch and a half. So I do that on the table saw. Now I'll take a quick break to talk about soldering. I have a whole bunch of extra pieces in my basement that I sort of practiced soldering with. I'm not a plumbing soldering expert by any stretch of the imagination. What I did was buy a whole bunch of these 50 cent copper caps for the half inch pipe. And then I have a big chunk of half inch pipe in my basement that was just sitting around doing nothing. So that's what I practiced on. Certainly this isn't gonna be a plumbing soldering video, but this is how I practiced and I found it was pretty useful if you've never done soldering before or if it's been a long time. You might want to do this because like I said those caps are 50 cents Canadian so that's pretty cheap. They are a little bit different than soldering shutoffs. The copper caps do get hotter f much faster than the shutoff valves but it is very similar to the shutoff valves overall. So I clean the pipes, I clean the copper cap I put on tinning flux and for all of these fittings, I just use tinning flux, nothing else. And then put the copper cap onto the half inch pipe. For the half inch pipe, I use approximately one half of an inch of solder each time I either did a practice or do the real thing. So it looks like that. And then obviously just use the torch to heat everything up. Overall, I didn't find the soldering very difficult. Obviously to do really nice soldering, it's perhaps a little bit more difficult, but I think after two or three tries, you uh, should be able to get your soldering techniques down. And there's lots of tutorials already online for how to solder a joint. So I did want to take a brief moment here to discuss how I practiced, and that's pretty much it. So once I cleaned it up, it looks like that. That's maybe my third time practicing. Obviously I got a little bit of a drip that time, so I need to be a little bit more careful. I put in a little bit too much solder, but that's okay. Like I said, it was just a practice and I practiced about five or six times. 
So after I did one practice, I would just take the pipe cutter, cut a chunk off, clean the pipe up again, and then practice again. And you can see I was doing it on both ends. So lots of practice in, really cheap. Like I said, 50 cents per practice. Now, because there's no shutoff valves before I remove the taps that were on the old sink, I need to turn the water off for the house. I don't know why there's so many sinks in my house that have no shutoff valves, but I'm gonna be doing this all the time for putting in any sink in my house. I also shut the water off at the hot water heater. And I do open one of the taps on the second floor of my house. And then I just take the hoses off my washer and dryer and open the valves here. And that gets all the water out of the systems. So I don't have any water from the second floor trying to rush out while I'm cutting these. So everything stayed nice and dry, which was decent. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take the pipe cutter and just cut off both of these pipes, pretty straightforward. And obviously this pipe cutter is a pretty essential tool if you're gonna be cutting your copper pipes like I am. It does take a little bit of time to get through them all. If they weren't connected, maybe I would just cut one off at a time, but because they're connected to each other, I'm just cutting them both off. And I do use this uh, wire brush to clean the exterior of the old pipes, but I also have these little strips of sanding paper that are designed for doing copper pipe as well, and I use those to also polish the pipes up a little bit. So overall, pretty simple process. The other thing I do is just try and make sure that there's no burrs inside of the pipe, and then that the, the tops of the pipe don't have any little burrs or any irregularities on them. So I do take the sandpaper to the top of the pipes, but I don't really show it. So the valves I'm putting on are these ones, and they are quarter turn ball valves. So the, the one side of them is just the female connector for the half inch pipe. And then the other side is the threaded side that your taps can connect to. I also use a dry paper towel to wipe everything down so there's no particulate or anything like that. I take wet paper towel and just wrap it around the joints that are closest to each of the pipes that I'm soldering so that I don't have any melt. However, I think that those pipes are long enough that it won't cause any issues. For this first pipe, I did all the flux off camera, I guess. I thought I recorded it, maybe not, but that's okay. I do record it for the second one. And then to prevent burning my house down, I just take one sheet of old drywall and put it behind the pipes I'm soldering. And then I take a license plate from about 10 years ago and I just sort of fold that in half, hang it on the drywall, and then just put that right behind the, the pipe that I'm soldering. And that seemed like an effective way to prevent anything from burning or you know discoloring the paint on the wall, that kind of thing. So definitely if you're gonna solder by your painted drywall, I would recommend putting something behind so that either you don't start a fire or you don't discolor your walls. Now, as mentioned, those little copper caps that I was practicing on heat up a lot faster than these taps. And the reason for that is because the copper caps are very thin, whereas these taps are actually quite a bit larger and have quite a bit more metal in them. So it does take a while. What I found is once you start getting a little bit of steam out of the top of the valves, that they're almost hot enough to start melting the actual solder. The other thing I would point out is that I'm soldering these valves on in the open position. And you should look at your manufacturer's directions as to whether you're supposed to solder them open or closed. And once that's done, I just take a damp piece of paper towel and give everything a little bit of a wipe because obviously the solder heats up and starts running down the pipe a little bit and makes a little bit of a mess, but just a quick wipe down will solve that problem. I probably put a little bit too much flux on. So you can see that some of the flux ran out. It's tinning flux. That's why it has that solder color. So on the next one, I use less solder and that doesn't happen. But overall, there's no runs and the solder job looks pretty, pretty tight to me. Obviously, except for the discoloration from the flux. And then for the second one, like I said, I didn't show the fluxing on the first one. So just put this in ultra fast motion and put the flux on the pipe, then clean up the ball valve and then add some flux to the ball valve. And then once both pieces are fluxed, just put them together 
And then you can see there's flux sticking out the edges. That's what I didn't really wipe down the first time. So this time I do wipe down all the flux that got pushed out and it doesn't make uh, the mess that was on the first one. And then the other thing I do is just throw a damp cloth over the first valve that I put on just so I don't overheat that in the process of putting on the second valve. So just like the first one, once I saw a little bit of steam start coming out the top of the valve, that was a good indication that it was hot enough to melt the solder and then just solder around the valve. Give everything a wipe down. Now, one thing to note, I do leave these for a good half hour to a full hour before I turn the water back on. And definitely these valves do take a while to cool off completely. So there's the solder job on the second one, which I'm pretty happy with. I think it looks pretty good. And it doesn't have any of that discoloration from the flux running down, or very little anyway. Anyway, both of them are in and both of them are holding water. So like I said, I cut this base down. What I did was wrap it up in painter's tape. And I did that because obviously it's not, it is real wood, but it's like a particle board with sort of a, a laminate on top of it. And I didn't want to get it all chipped up. A couple little chips in the process, but nothing too major. So I didn't take it apart or anything like that. I just ran it through the table saw as a square and just rotated it around like you saw. And there you go, about an inch and a half or so cut off the bottom of it. Now, because the original base had little feet attached to it as well, once I cut it in half, it no longer had those little feet on it. So I had to re-drill some holes in the base so that I could put the inserts back in and then add the little feet to the bottom of the cabinet. So pretty easy process, just re-drilled it and then put the inserts back in. And definitely you're gonna to wanna to re-drill it if you do something similar to that. Otherwise you could end up cracking your base. And once the inserts are in, just take the little feet and put those back in place. And that's pretty much it for the base of this thing. Obviously you're gonna do a little bit of a test fit. And the other thing I'm doing is taking the one foot level and making sure everything's level on the floor, but it's pretty good as it is because the floor is relatively level to begin with. For this cabinet, there are only two screws that hold the base to the top, which is fine because gravity is gonna hold the base to the top anyway. And all I need is a screwdriver because everything is pre-drilled. And now I have to cut the back of the cabinet up. So I'm just gonna put it in place and then mark out roughly where I have to cut it. And I'm just sort of doing a rough estimate of where I need to cut. And basically I'm just taking that one board out which is obviously going to weaken the cabin a little bit but whatever that's the only way it's going to fit that's the only way it's going to fit for this i'm just using a small circular saw and this circular saw has sort of a plunge feature on it which is actually pretty useful for this kind of cutting now i also need to cut a notch out for the plumbing for the washing machine so i'm going to mark that out the same way and then i'm going to take the same circular saw and cut out where i have notched it out and this is where this plunge feature comes in handy. So you can start the saw, line it up, and then plunge it down into the board. So definitely a very useful saw for doing this kind of job. Now my plan was to keep all the drain lines, but you can see, I'll just throw the level here on the drain for the laundry tub. You can see it's going the wrong way and it's, it's off by quite a bit. It's off by about a centimeter, centimeter and a half over 20 centimeters. So it's sloped backwards and I can't change that because you can see the 90 degree elbow is on a slight angle, sort of to the right. And that caused the vertical piece that goes up to the sink to be on a funny angle. And then obviously that caused the laundry tub drain to be on a reverse slope angle. So I made the decision just to cut everything out. But I don't spend too much time on that because obviously this video is getting pretty long. So I'm going to put the drain in right now and then I'm going to start messing with the plumbing a little bit. You could use silicone or you can use this plumber's putty. I went with the plumber's putty just to try a product I haven't worked with before. So just take about a golf ball sized chunk of the putty, work it with your hand a little bit like silly putty to get all the bumps and cracks out of it. And then just put it on the back of the drain just like that pretty easy and I am wearing gloves. I don't know how bad it is for you, but I'm sure the container says that if you live in the state of California, it causes cancer. 
as per everything. So I'm gonna put the drain in, give it a solid push down. It's gonna cause some of the putty to squeeze out of the top and bottom. So before I fasten it into place, I'll just wipe off some of the putty. And then this goes rubber gasket, paper gasket, and then screw everything into place. And for this strainer, I really just go hand tight, but I do come back at it a few times and give it another turn by hand. I find that it does sort of loosen after a second or two, so you can tighten it up just by hand. Like I said, just go back at it every couple of minutes and you should be able to get another quarter turn by hand without too much issue. And obviously I wiped off the excess putty from the top. Now I ended up getting a slightly different P-trap. This one has a 10 degree elbow in it. This one can move in all directions, 10 degrees. So it gives you a little bit more play, which I like, so I went with that. And then I've reinstalled the 90 degree elbow, obviously this time vertically, and then I've added a three inch extension onto the P-trap. For this ABS, I'm using this Oatly PVC and ABS cleaner. And then I'm also using the same brand Oatly ABS yellow cement. So just the basic crap. To get the faucet in, obviously just take all of the hoses, put them down into the hole in the back. And then there's a rubber washer and a metal washer that goes on. And then there's a retaining nut that holds everything in place. So very simple, obviously you gotta pass the hoses through the washers and nuts and then just give it a tighten down. And then there's two screws that you can also tighten down slightly and that's pretty much it. And the faucet's in place. So also very easy to put in just like the, the drainer strainer. And then just like a kitchen faucet, this thing has a weight. And that way if you pull the handle out, it'll automatically retract. And then once the weight's on, there is an attachment you have to put the hose on. Otherwise, it'll spray inside of your vanity. So get that all hooked up, and then I will drop the sink on and see how everything looks. And it looks pretty good. So now I'm going to finish messing with the plumbing before I actually end up siliconing the top of the cabinet. First thing I need to do is install the tailpiece. When you're installing the tailpiece, it's important to have the coupling nuts in the correct orientation as well as the washers. And I did do it off camera, but you can see that I've fixed the drain for the laundry tub. It could probably be angled a little steeper towards the drain, but that's okay. It's better than it was. And I did chip the cabinet in the back, but I did save the white laminate piece. So I'm gonna reinstall that later with a bit of glue. So now that the tailpiece is in and I've sort of dry fit the sink to the drain, I'm just gonna take some silicone and run it along the top of the cabinet. I'm pretty sure the instructions for this thing said I only needed a screwdriver and a wrench, but I think at this point I've pretty much used every tool I got here for this thing. There's nothing holding the sink in other than gravity and this little bead of silicone that I put around the top of the sinks. So there's no additional screws or anything like that to put in. And then obviously once it's in, I'll just give it a push down, make sure it's held in place. And then really the last thing to do for the drainage is to connect the tailpiece. So you can see there's a little washer on the top of the tailpiece, and then I'll raise the coupling nut up and tighten it up. I just do it by hand and this nut actually leaks a little bit when I fill the sink with water so I do have to come back and tighten that one up. So as mentioned make sure you get that gasket in the correct orientation and then tighten the coupling nut to tie everything together. And that's pretty much it for the drain line. Overall the drain line was pretty easy to hook up however obviously it took some time I had to go get all the parts and get the glue and then let the glue set up so it was a bit of a pain to have to do that but overall I think it's a much better setup now and really the last thing I'm gonna do is hook up all the water lines again there's a lot under here so obviously there's four shutoffs down here now and then there's hoses for the washer both hot and cold and now there's gonna be hoses for the laundry tub faucets as well for pretty much all of these faucets I just go hand tight and then 
about a quarter turn extra with the channel locks. So pretty straightforward. And it only takes a few minutes to get everything put together underneath the sink. And quick test of the sink. And it is working. So initially I don't get any leaks from the sink, either from the water lines or the drain line. I do put a paint tray under there just in case it leaks so I don't fill the cabinet with water, obviously, but that is not really an issue. So with the sink about halfway filled with water, just pull the plug out and see if it's leaking. And like I said, it is leaking a little bit around the tailpiece. And it's just because I didn't tighten it enough, obviously. I just went hand tight on the top pieces. And really all I have to do is tighten the coupling nuts down extra quarter turn and I'm gonna use the channel locks for that. So you can see it's leaking right there. All the gaskets I used were hard plastic gaskets. They do make rubber ones as well, and those would probably not have leaked just because the hard plastic ones don't really compress too much. So after tightening the coupling nut down one more time, pull the sink, and now it's good to go. No leaking whatsoever, and because this video is so long, it took me about a week to get this voiceover, I can say with certainty that the sink hasn't leaked since that first test run. So that's it. Overall, this was a bit of an odyssey to get this sink installed. I thought it was going to be between two and three hours. In reality, it took me about two days, basically the entire weekend, to get this thing set up, installed, and finalized. A little bit crazy, but it's done, and obviously it looks a lot better than the old one. Anyway, thanks for checking out my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.